All right. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be going over how I calibrate using HCFR. Um, so I'm not a professional at doing it, but uh, I'll show you what I know. And if uh, at any point if somebody see, you see something and you're like, hey, you should be doing this, not that, and you can tell me why, I would really appreciate it. That would be great. But uh, I've been using this for quite a few years, many years actually. Gosh, probably, I don't even know, a long, long time. Uh, I love this program, so I just want to kind of go over how I do it. Maybe it'll help somebody else. And if nothing else, it'll serve as a reminder for me in the future when I go to calibrate again, how I do things. So let me flip over to my computer here. And this is my computer screen. So I already have my i1 Display Pro mounted onto my TV. The drivers are installed. I have HCFR downloaded and installed. So let's just open it up. And this is the window I'm greeted with in full screen here. And I'm gonna go over to new. I'm gonna be using automatic, not DVD manual. That's my generator, just the built-in ones in HCFR. I select my meter, which is the i1 Display Pro and leave everything else. I'm not using a correction file because I don't have a spectrophotometer. So I click finish and you'll see me moving these windows out of the way. It's because my meter is literally in the middle of my television. So I have to move it so I can see um, here. I don't know if one of these would be a better choice, uh, but I've always just left it on non refresh. So maybe that's something you can tell me. But uh, for that, I'm just I'm just going to leave everything default and hit OK. That'll pop up the main window here. Now, some of the first things I like to do is go to measures, generator, configure. And I like to, it, it's normally on, I believe, full screen, either that or overlay, but I choose floating window. I like to have a floating window so I can still see things. Um, and because this is an LCD, not a CRT or anything like that, it's not a not an issue. Um, an LED, LCD. And I just change it to floating window and hit OK. And then I'm going to hit play to bring up the window and stop. That way I can then adjust the size of the window. I just get a small window, place my place it right underneath my meter on the television. So that's where my meter is. And we can close that. And now to get set up, I'm going to go to advanced preferences. References. I choose Rec 70975 because of the color space. I can't ever seem to get it to fully match. I don't know. I've had better luck with this, but again, if somebody can point out something here, what I should be selecting, I'd appreciate it. But I'm going to use 75% for the color space. Uh, here you can choose display gamma with black compensation and set whatever power gam power law gamma you want, whether it's 2.2, which most people use, 2.4, which is like for cinema or a well set up home theater or somewhere in between like 2.35. I, however, I'm going to be using the ITU RBT 1886 setting, which uh, sets the black levels according to my display as far as I understand it. And that's what I like to do. I leave everything else the same since I'm not doing HDR or anything like that. I'm going to go over to advanced. Here it is normally set for uh, recommended. So I change it to CIE 2000, absolute Y without gamma, and then default. Hit apply and OK. Uh, so the very first thing I'm going to do is take a reading of my display as it currently is. So measure grayscale right here. I'm just doing grayscale right now, not color. So and then it'll pop up that window and it'll go through the readings here, starting with black and then working up to the brightest white for the Rec 709 color space. And as you can see in the background, some charts are filling out, which we'll go over in a second. But I have my television set to its default settings, so the colors are pretty bad, pretty far off from what they can be. So that's why uh, it doesn't look that great right now because everything is the default. And let me just close these so I can show you. So this is normally how it starts with just measures. Uh, what I like to do is come up here. I choose luminance graph. Then I choose gamma graph. I choose RGB levels graph. And then I choose the CIE diagram right there and that'll open up these tabs down at the bottom here which are the ones I use to calibrate I don't really use luminance much I just kind of check it once in a while but I don't actually use the screen unless maybe I'm doing um, HDR but I just I've always had it open all these years so I just these are the tabs I use so anyways um, 
right here we have uh, the blue line which is the average you can get rid of that if you don't want it if you don't want the display average that's usually better if you're doing like a power law gamma you want 2.4 you can see where the average of it is that might be helpful I'm just gonna get rid of that the yellow line is what our measurements were which are pretty on target surprisingly for right now but they're gonna change a lot it's gonna take a lot of finicking to get it with along with RGB levels um, but that's our luminance and the dotted line here is the reference that's what we want to be aligned to for our display for BT 1886 if you're using a power law gamma it's going to be a dead straight line on whatever your gamma is but BT 1886 has this curve here so that's what I'm using so let's go ahead and turn luminance back on let's look at our RGB levels on this tab now this is split into two screens the top screen and the bottom screen up top here the dotted line is the reference we want every all the colors to be right on that dotted line if we can that would be ideal and so you can see that my green is slightly oversaturated my blue is just a tiny bit undersaturated and my red is pretty far undersaturated compared to the others which is what down here the very important part creates what is called our delta e scale uh, or the color difference from the target from the standards and the ideals so down low we're pretty decent staying under three and then it goes really high up into the bright colors the bright whites of our screen the colors are really far off um, from target where we want them so we're going to do adjustments to get these all a lot better uh, everything three and under delta e three and under if you can get this purple line below there you're going to be sitting at a level that is imperceptible to the human eye from my understanding so if you can get it all under there that's excellent it depends on the controls you have available on your display but uh that that would be with my controls i know i can get all them all under delta e1 which is unbelievably low it's way more than you need so that's what i'm going to be going for eventually and the way i like to start this is actually with the gamma here so i want to align i, I always start by trying to align the gamma with the the reference or the targets so let me show you how I do that. On my measures tab, I select a level. Let's say just for whatever, I can select whatever. I don't like to go to the bright and the darkest first. Um, so I'm just gonna choose 80. I'm gonna hit continuous read, continuous measures, which will pop up this window and it's constantly taking measurements. You'll see over on the left here, there's numbers that are adjusting. It's just taking the readings as it's getting them with a little variation, nothing to worry about and the screen flickers a little bit you'll see it's just constantly taking readings so with that reading this window right now i'm going to go over to my gamma tab and then at 80 percent here i'm going to try to get since that's what i'm adjusting right now i'm going to try to get this 80 percent to match up to this reference point so on my phone app which is what i use to adjust my uh color temperature i'm going to Go to that 80% measurement and let's try to raise it a little bit. See if we can get a difference here. Let's see. Um, and the controls won't always match up. Like for me, it shows 80% on my thing, but it doesn't always match up. So I have to find out which control is actually controlling this. Which I'm not having much luck with right now. It's like my phone app's not registering at the moment. Let me just try to... Oh, yeah. That's why my phone app got disconnected. Let me fix that so let me try this again okay there we go sorry about that so going back to gamma, you can do it on this screen too I just like to do it with the gamma graph personally just so I can see where it's going so let me adjust my settings here so for me, I have to use the 70% red, green, and blue colors to adjust 80. It's just, I, I, I understand it personally. I don't know how to explain it. So I'm sorry, I can't be more help there. Let's see if we can get this a little 
tighter to the target. So I'm just visually inspecting how close that yellow is getting to that gray dot right here. And here it's pretty darn tight. Um, so, and it will adjust as I adjust 90, as I adjust 70, that one's going to have a little fluctuation as well. So it's a constant battle back and forth, tweaking it to get it. But for right now, I'm going to jump over to 30. I'll just click this 30. It's going to change my color window. I'm going to go back to gamma. And then looking at 30 here, oh, it's already on target. So I actually, I don't need to do that. I, let's try 40 instead. So back on gamma, just moving the window out of my way so I can see, but right here, we're a little bit below. So I'm going to go to 40 and make it a little darker. And right now, all I'm adjusting to get the luminance changed is the green, only the green color which is going to mess up the RGB, but we'll adjust that later. So I don't know if I already explained that, but all I'm doing here is adjusting the green color. I have options for red, green, and blue, but I'm only doing green. So now let's go to 70. I'll show you just a couple more and then I'll uh, cut out so you can don't have to watch this whole thing. So now let's say I'm at 70. I want to lower it a little bit, make it a little darker. I mean, on the green, green only. And as you can see, it's, slowly bumping more into place. So we're getting a tighter graph here, but let me stop the measurements. So if I go to RGB levels though, it doesn't necessarily mean that these colors are going to be better because the red and blue are still off. So the only thing I'm doing right now is adjusting the luminance or the gamma by adjusting the green and then I'll fix the uh, red and blue later and I'll show you how to do that. But I'm going to cut here and get this chart lined up only using green through this whole chart and show you what that looks like and then we'll go on from there. 